When Muslims preach Islam to a Christian, they're quick to say, we believe in Jesus too. In fact, we love Jesus more than Christians do. But when you start asking what they mean by belief in Jesus, it turns out to have nothing to do with the Jesus who walked the shores of the Sea of Galilee. They don't go to first century sources to learn about Jesus. They don't go to historians to learn about Jesus. They go to Muhammad to learn about Jesus. Muhammad simply told his followers, without any evidence whatsoever, that many of the most important people who came before him were Muslims, even though we know, historically, that they weren't Muslims at all. So, when our Muslim friends claim, we believe in so-and-so who came before Muhammad, all they really mean is, we believe whatever Muhammad said about so-and-so. We believe in Muhammad, and in Muhammad's version of so-and-so that Muhammad came up with when he stole so-and-so from so-and-so's real followers. It seems that Muhammad robbed more than caravans, my friends. He also robbed religions. He took the most popular religious figures from Jews and Christians, just like he took the Kaaba and the Hajj rituals from the polytheists of Mecca. When Muhammad wanted something, he took it and said that Allah wanted him to have it. Just ask Aisha. Now, if you show a Muslim preacher that all of our historical sources, not to mention every respected historical Jesus scholar on the planet, contradict the Islamic view of Jesus, you're sure to get a thoughtful, carefully researched response. Oh, did I say thoughtful, carefully researched response? I meant you're sure to get an absurd, possibly insane conspiracy theory. Why does all of history contradict the Islamic view of Jesus? Because someone corrupted all of history. Well, who corrupted it? If you're talking to a Muslim who knows absolutely nothing about history, you'll hear something about the Council of Nicaea or Constantine in the 4th century. But if you're talking to a Muslim who knows anything whatsoever about history, he'll know that belief in Jesus' death, resurrection, and deity can all be traced back to the first century, so he'll need to give you a conspiracy theory about the first century, and that's when he'll tell you that the Apostle Paul corrupted Christianity. Of course, the idea that someone could destroy Jesus' message should sound strange, whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. According to both Christianity and Islam, Jesus lived the most miraculous life in history, which means that his work and message must have been pretty important to God. But it was all a waste of time, according to Muslims, because no matter how hard he tried, Allah just couldn't protect Jesus' message from the mighty Apostle Paul. In Surah 3, verse 55 of the Quran, Allah promised Jesus, that he would protect Jesus' followers until the day of resurrection. Behold, God said, O oh Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself and clear thee of the falsehoods of those who blaspheme. I will make those who follow thee superior to those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. Then shall ye all return unto me, and I will judge between you of the matters wherein ye dispute. In Surah 61, verse 14, Allah says that he aided the true followers of Jesus until they became uppermost over those who opposed Jesus. O oh, you who believe, be helpers in the cause of Allah. As Isa, son of Maryam, said to his disciples, Who are my helpers in the cause of Allah? The disciples said, We are helpers in the cause of Allah. So a party of the children of Israel believed, and another party disbelieved. Then we aided those who believed against their enemy, and they became uppermost. So, Allah thought he could protect Jesus' message. He promised Jesus that he would make Jesus' followers superior to those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. That's a long time. And Allah said that he did it. He said that he aided the true followers of Jesus until they became uppermost over those who rejected Jesus. But according to our Muslim friends, Allah just wasn't prepared for the Apostle Paul. 
The Apostle Paul completely overpowered Allah, thwarted Allah's plans, and even tricked Allah into aiding the wrong followers. Poor Allah. Our Muslim friends just don't see a problem with believing in someone, Jesus, whose message totally contradicts Islam, so long as they can magically wave away all available evidence with their conspiracy wand. How can we get them to understand how silly this is? I know. Let's do the same thing to Muhammad. Let's approach Muhammad the same way Muslims approach Jesus or Moses or Abraham. Here goes. Let me announce here and now that I believe in Muhammad. I believe that Muhammad was a true prophet. I'm sure Muslims will be thrilled to hear this, and they'll respond, That's great, David. So you agree with us that Islam is true? No. No, I don't. You see, the Muhammad you Muslims believe in is a corruption. I believe in the true Muhammad, who was a devout Christian, sent to preach the gospel to the Arabs. Muhammad was convinced that God is a trinity, and that Jesus is the divine Son, who entered creation, died on the cross for sins, and rose from the dead. Now, you may be wondering, if Muhammad was a devout Christian, why do Islam's most trusted sources say that he preached Islam and rejected the Trinity and rejected the deity of Christ and called for the violent subjugation of Christians? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you what happened. Before the time of Muhammad, most of the Christians in Arabia were heretics and compromisers. Muhammad came to restore true faith in Jesus Christ. He spent his entire life telling people to repent and to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and to believe that God is one in essence, but three in person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Many pagans converted to Christianity under the powerful preaching of Muhammad. Before he died, he gave his followers the Quran which, in its original uncorrupted form, was simply an Arabic translation of the New Testament. We can still see remnants of Christianity even in the corrupt version of the Quran that Muslims have today. That's why Jesus is so unique, even in the corrupted Quran. Even in the corrupted Quran, Jesus is the word of Allah. Jesus is a spirit proceeding from Allah. Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus could create life and give sight to the blind, and heal the lepers, and raise the dead. Jesus is the Messiah. And even the corrupted Quran tells Christians to judge by the gospel. Let the people of the gospel judge by what God hath revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what God hath revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. So, if the Quran was originally a Christian book, what happened? Well, there was a villain, an evil, deceptive pagan named Uthman, who hated Christianity and who didn't know Muhammad and who worshipped Allah, one of the many pagan deities of Arabia. After Muhammad died, Uthman decided to destroy everything Muhammad had worked so hard to accomplish. The diabolical Uthman realized that the best way to destroy Muhammad's work would be to become a wolf in sheep's clothing and to infiltrate the Christian community in Arabia. So he pretended to be a Christian, and his deception was so convincing that he eventually rose to a position of leadership. Once he was in charge, Uthman ordered all of the Christians in Arabia to hand over their copies of the Quran i.e. their copies of the Arabic translation of the New Testament. Uthman then rewrote the Quran, turning it into a book that denies the core teachings of Christianity, and he forced the Christians of Arabia to believe in his corrupted Quran. Muslim historians remembered what Uthman did, although even that story was corrupted. As we read in Sahih al-Bukhari 4987, Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied, their new, thoroughly corrupt version of the Quran, and ordered that all the other Quranic materials, the true, original Christian Quran, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or whole copies, be burnt. So, 
The Islam that Muslims believe in today isn't the religion that Muhammad preached. Muhammad preached submission to Jesus Christ. Uthman corrupted this message by claiming that Allah is the only true God and that Jesus was a mere prophet of Allah. He did this in order to degrade Jesus and to keep people from believing in Christianity, the religion of Muhammad. And that's how Muhammad's powerful Christian message was transformed into anti-Christian propaganda by a wicked pagan deceiver. Now, how can Muslims refute my theory? They can't appeal to the Quran since the Quran of today was corrupted by Uthman. Nor can they appeal to the Hadith or the Sira literature or the commentaries since all of these were written after the time of Uthman. Muslims can't even say that Uthman was one of Muhammad's companions since I hereby declare that Uthman simply wrote himself into Muhammad's life to help establish his own authority. Isnad criticism is irrelevant since later Isnad critics were under the influence of Uthman's false teachings. I conclude that Muhammad preached Orthodox Christianity and that Uthman was the true founder of what's now called Islam. Perhaps we should start referring to Islam as Uthmanism, since it comes from Uthman. If any Muslims would like to debate my theory, I would be happy to defend my claim that Muhammad was a devout Christian. All I'll need to do is use the exact same methods that we've seen used by Zakir Naik and Ahmed Didat and Shabir Ali and Muhammad Hijab and so many others. What better way to twist and distort history than by using the methods that Muslim debaters use to twist and distort the history of Jesus? So, how can Muslims respond when I say that Muhammad was a devout Christian? The only possible response here from Muslims would be to reject the methodology I just used to claim that Muhammad was a devout Christian. They'd have to say, David, it's silly and irrational to throw out facts of history by asserting that someone corrupted all of the evidence. But how can they say this when it's exactly what they do with Jesus? The historical facts about Jesus don't line up with Islam, so the historical facts must have been changed by Paul. Fine. The historical facts about Muhammad don't line up with Christianity, so the historical facts about Muhammad must have been changed by Uthman. See how easy this is? If you want to steal everyone else's guy, we can steal your guy, even though we really, really don't want your guy. So, spread the word, Christians. Muhammad was a devout Christian whose life and teachings were corrupted by the pagan Uthman. There's absolutely nothing Muslims can say or do to prove otherwise without thoroughly undermining their own methodology. Does all of this sound ridiculous to you, my Muslim friends? Does the mental gymnastics routine I just performed seem like a joke? Well then, now you know how we feel when we have to sit here day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, listening to you do the exact same thing with Jesus and Paul and the Bible.